Now the church, quote, an unquote church is in free fall. Well, what do I mean by free fall? It seems that every denomination has caved or will be caving to the LGBTQ agenda to include the charismatic Pentecostalism, Assemblies of God, New Apostolic Church, the Baptist, Southern Baptist Convention, Evangelical Lutheran Churches of America, the United Methodists, the Presbyterian Churches USA, and I can go on and on. While investigating this topic, I found myself over at BereanResearch.org, where they have carefully laid out exactly what the homosexual agenda is. And if you don't know specifically what it is, I'm going to read it to you. It will be for your benefit to have a clear understanding that this is not an agenda that has to do with getting along. This is, is an agenda that has to do with them taking over. Now, here's a note from the Berean Research site. They say, and I agree with it, we differentiate between those who struggle with sexual sin, sin outside of marriage between one man and one woman, and those who advocate for marriage between two men or two women. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11, it tells us that there is no such thing as homosexual Christian. But the good news is that Christ's shed blood covers all sin. Now, unfortunately, the homosexuals agenda strategy is to make churches either silent or powerless to speak the truth or to get them on board as being gay affirming. The homosexual agenda at its core is a self-centered set of beliefs and objectives designed to promote and even mandate approval of homosexuality and homosexual ideology, along with the strategies used to implement such. Now, the goals and means of this movement include indoctrinating students in public schools, restricting the free speech of opposition, obtaining special treatment for homosexuals, distorting biblical teaching and science, and interfering with the freedom of association. Now, advocates of the homosexual agenda seek special rights for homosexuals that other people don't have, such as immunity from criticism or what's called hate speech. Such people's rights will necessarily come at the expense of the rights of broader security. The homosexual agenda is the biggest threat to the right of free speech today. Now here's a list of their strategies, a step-by-step -step approach to the homosexual agenda. One, legalize homosexuality. Two, promote gay pride parades. Three, Demand non-discrimination laws. Four, insist on homosexuals' adoption of children. Five, push the homosexual agenda in schools. Six, force gay marriage on society. Seven, demand public funding to deal with increased homosexual-related social problems. Eight, promote the transgender agenda. Nine, Impose a large scale loss of free speech. 10. Ban counseling for kids confused by homosexual issues. And 11. Attack churches. Now there's more, but keep in mind this list comes from a book that was written back in 1990 titled How America Will Conquer Its Fear and Hatreds of Gays in the 1990s. So this information is certainly not new. But wait, there's more. 13. Talk about gay and gayness as loud and as often as possible. And they do this by using late night airwaves and special channels, as well as their rights to peace peacefully assemble to do so. 14. Portray gays as victims, not as aggressive challengers. 15. Give homosexual protectors a just cause. 16. Make gays look good. 17. Make Christians look like victimizers and 18 get funds from corporate America. The homosexual agenda is convoluted with phrases, practices and terms. Of course, we know that the rainbow symbol was adopted by homosexuals, completely hijacked the rainbow from God's account and his covenant with Noah. Then, of course, there's the L. 
LGBTQBT, which stands for lesbian, queer, bisexual, and transgender, and the phrase called gay Christian, gay pride, gay rights, non-binary, and then those who oppose sexuality are labeled homophobes, hate mongers, bigots, and then there's a phrase, a phrase called zapping of anyone who rebuffs homosexuality. Now, the homosexual agenda is full of its leaders and their names and faces that you all know, but it has elevated itself to the degree where it has its own conference called Revoice Conference. Now, I quote here, this conference illustrates just how cleverly deceptive this Revoice movement really is, as they manipulate the audience emotionally with heart-wrenching testimonies between each and every session by homosexual Christians who have decided to be celibate for Christ, for which they surely deserve all the glory and applause. Now, Robert Gagnon is an associate professor of the New Testament with a history of linking homosexuality to pedophilia, promoting ex-gay therapy and condemning homosexuality as unhealthy and dysfunctional. Now, Robert, in an excerpt from an essay he wrote, says, the adoption of terminology for self-identity that cannot be sanctified and inevitably brings in the whole LGBTQ baggage. This terminology is normally associated with self-affirmation rather than sin and switches the obligation of the church from a call for repentance and restoration to a call for inclusion and diversity that celebrates what should be mortified. The fact that evangelicals proponents of the sexual minority language are unwilling to use it of those of which a pedophilic or polymorous orientation should tell us all something. So that there, in a nutshell, outlines the homosexual agenda. So let's get on to the apostasy of the matter. Now, there are a number of gay, same-sex attracted leaders that are pushing this agenda like you wouldn't believe. One of which is Sam Albury, who is an apologist and writer for Ravi Zacharias International Ministries, and he's a consulting editor for the Gospel Coalition. Albury promotes the Revoice Conference. Now, next on that list is Nate Collins. He is the Revoice founder. The stated goals of the Revoice Conference include supporting, encouraging, and empowering gay, lesbian, same-sex attracted, and other LGBT Christians so that they can flourish while observing the historic Christian doctrine of marriage and sexuality. The conference main theme, homosexuals who don't commit physical acts are free to keep their LGBTQ plus identity. Now, other gay, same-sex attracted Christian leaders include Greg Coles, Wesley Hill, Jonathan Merritt, Preston Sprinkle, Eve Tushnet, and Matthew Vines. In my investigation, I spent some time over at ReformationCharlotte.org where our friends there have basically chronicled article after article of ministry, pastor, and all of the people who have obfuscated the office of truth and righteousness and have succumbed to the LGBTQ agenda. Look for yourself. The Apostle Paul was in Rome and preached probably one of the greatest sermons ever. And even to this day, what he has said and what's written in the word is so relevant. 
And in Romans chapter one, verse 16, I'll pick up there. It says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to first the Jew and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heavens against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it to them. For the invisible things of him from creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse." Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became foolish, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made in like corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and to creeping things." Wherefore, God has also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did not change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust towards one another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. Now, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness, fornications, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evils, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that when which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So I want to be very clear that this video post is for Christians. It's real easy to come off as being a hater or someone who does not like homosexuals. The greatest thing you can do for someone who is in a homosexual lifestyle and the greatest display of love that you can ever give them is to tell them the truth. Truth is exactly what they need because to not tell them the truth is already sentencing them to hell forever. I recently posted a video called God's love is unconditional, but his acceptance is not. And it's not an exhaustive teaching, but it does talk about how important it is for people to understand what God's love is really all about and that it's an agape love. It absolutely transcends anything emotional. It's not empathetic and it's not even sympathetic. It's agape. I encourage you to go over and listen to that particular video. I don't quite know how to end this. So I'll end this particular video post with truth. First Corinthians chapter six, verses nine through 11. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. Thank you for listening to Dr. Forensics. If you like this information, please click like, subscribe, and share. God bless you and your families.